Good afternoon, everybody. How are you all doing today? Uh, thank you for joining us. I can see Natasha is coming from Sizzling Solihull. Um, and we've got Jenny Saunders from Sunny Tamworth in North Warwickshire as well. Let me know if you can hear me okay. Otherwise, I'm going to grab a pair of um, headphones and um, pop them in uh, so you can hear me a little bit better. If you just pop in the chat function there, if you can hear me okay. Um, and I will get, you can hear me well. Brilliant. Okay. That is good to know. Um, okay. So, brilliant. Thank you, Effie. Thank you for joining us as well. Um, so let me know. I've put a poll up as well. To be interested to know if you could all vote on that. Would you like to have your own podcast to one become a thought leader in your space, two to market your products and services, three attract a new audience, or four to monetize your brand? So that will kind of determine um, which way. Um, this presentation goes and where I kind of um, add some emphasis for you. Um, yeah, Chrome is the best one, Jenny, for this. Um, I know we've tried it before with both Safari and Firefox, and they can be a bit buggy. I don't know why. Um, anyway, thank you all very much indeed for joining me. Um, I'm Alex Chisnell. Um, I am the founder of Podpreneur, which is um, an agency that helps people um, start, create, launch, grow podcasts. So um, I've got my own podcast called Screw It, Just Do It. Um, and we've now got Podpreneur, which is everything from a free Facebook group. We've had, crikey, I think about 10 people. We started it up during lockdown. We've had about 10 people launch podcasts from scratch um, in the last six, seven weeks, which has been awesome uh, to see. Literally one or two every single week um, so we've got that free group all the way up to uh, an agency that, that, that does done for you podcast for a bunch of different brands. Got my own podcast, Screw It, Just Do It, um, which I've managed to get as a number one ranked entrepreneurship podcast on iTunes. So um, hopefully I've got some good things that I can share with you today. So what I'm going to do is, any questions, by the way, um, pop them up in the chat function that you see on the right hand side there. Um, I'll then be able to see everything and be able to um, answer those for you as we go along. So also post up if anyone's already got a podcast, let me know. Or if you're just thinking of starting a podcast um, or have already started, just let me know. Just let me know in the chat box. Be interested to know what stage of the game um, everyone is at. Okay, so I'm just going to share my screen with you guys. Yeah, that's what I would do, Jenny. Just say I would uh, thinking. <laughs> oh, oh, sorry, you're thinking of starting a podcast. I've got you. Okay. Um, okay, so I'm going to focus the screen for you all. Okay, and then I'm just going to switch over and share these slides with you all. Okay, so let's present. Okay, there we go. Brilliant. Okay, so can you all see those slides? Just pop in the chat function that you can. Looks to me um, like you can. Yes, Effie says yes. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. Okay, so that is me, Popreneur Alex Chisnell. Um, who knows who that chap there is? You might recognize the logo behind him, by the way. Um, anybody recognize him at all? Or why I might have brought a slide up of him? He is the most... Uh, Rogan, absolutely. He is. He is Rogan. Um, so you might have seen last week Spotify allegedly paid Joe Rogan quite a bit of money to exclusively host his show on Spotify. 
So no longer will you be able to watch his Joe Rogan show on iTunes, on Apple, um, anywhere else, only on Spotify for the sum of $100 million, allegedly. So he's definitely signed the deal. The allegedly bit comes in as to how much, but a lot of articles saying um, that he's been paid $100 million to exclusively host his show on Spotify. Um, and a lot of people, myself included, think this is a bit of a big deal when it comes to podcasting, a bit of a landmark that people um, are now able to um, have their content exclusive on a platform and get rewarded pretty damn well, I think you would agree. So what 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 has he done to deserve this? Well, 100, 190 million downloads of his show um, is definitely going to have something to do with it, which is a huge number. You know, my show is nothing like that, but I could still get it to, to a number one ranking. But someone like Joe Rogan is able to do that consistently and to be literally be able to call on anybody in the world from Elon Musk to, um, yeah, trying to think of who else he's had on his, his, his show recently. Um, but, you know, some of the biggest sports uh, music stars in the world on his show. Um, so that was my opener for you. Um, why I think, you know, now there's never been a better time to start a podcast. Um, most common question I get asked is, which I'll show you in one of the other slides, is, uh, you know, have I missed the boat? When is a good time to start podcasting? And for me, the best time was yesterday, but the next best time is today um, to start your podcast. There's never a better time, and I'll show you some, some figures which will lead you uh, to hopefully believe what I say, that there is never a better time to start a podcast than now. Um, it's certainly never been more in the mainstream media and more people have heard about it the last 18 months and two years, I would say. Even people like my mum actually now know what I do. No idea what she thought I did before, but she now knows. Um, so by the end of this webinar, I would like uh, to convince you that podcasting is here to stay, that it's not too late to start, that anyone with zero tech knowledge can create a podcast. It's not expensive. People will want to listen to you, and you only need about four hours a week to launch a podcast. So, as I say, do pop up any questions as we go along into the chat box on the right-hand side, and please do answer uh, the poll. At the moment, marketing products and services is the leader, although it's a pretty even split at the moment. That's 40%. And then 20% uh, equally across the other, becoming a thought leader, attracting a new audience, and monetizing your personal brand. I'm always really interested to see this. Always run that poll um, on every webinar that I do, and also in my Facebook group, um, I run that as well. It's quite interesting to see what people um, are, what their, what their motivation is, what their goals are when it comes to podcasting. So just to what I'm not going to do is spend really long time um, telling you who I am and what I do. I just quickly want to just show you why um, I believe you should be listening to what I say, why I've got some knowledge and some expertise when it comes to podcasting. So I originally started off at BBC Radio Wales some 30 years ago, um, interviewing the likes of Lennox Lewis, Neil Kinnock back in the day. Um, and I now kind of feel I've come full circle. Um, to three years ago, I started my own podcast called Screw It, Just Do It. Last year, we got that to a number, consistently ranked number one podcast um, across across the world. So I kind of feel like I've come full circle, really, uh, in the audio space. It's just got a different name. Instead of radio, it's now called podcasting. You only have to see how much the BBC um, and the likes of other channels like that promote their podcasts that they've also embraced this technology. So moving forward, 
we've already taken our clients to the top of the podcast chart. So that's my podcast there on the left. Screw it, just do it. Um, and on the right, one of our clients, uh, Jonathan Bowman Perks, is inspiring leadership podcast. Um, and that's just an example. Uh, we've got a 90% success rate of our clients getting into the top 20. If they follow the instructions, anyone can do it. That's why I think it's a great opportunity for everybody. So we've had number ones, uh, which this was not my intention when I started a podcast, I can tell you, to get a number one podcast in Uganda. But it has happened, along with countries like Kenya, uh, South Africa, Switzerland, you name it. Um, and it's now downloaded in 140 plus countries worldwide. Uh, again, if someone had told me that one had started, I would have laughed my head off because to get you know my message and what my podcast is about, which is um, chatting to uh, successful up and coming entrepreneurs about how they've had the success they've had, to get that message to 140 countries worldwide would have meant 20 years ago taking out full page adverts in uh, newspapers um, and TV and radio, which is clearly not an option for 99.9% uh, of people. But due to the power of podcasts and social media, we've been able to get our show listened to in over 140 countries, even in countries that I'd never actually heard of, a country called the Aland Islands that lie between Finland and Russia and is a genuine country which I've never heard of now downloads the show, which is awesome. Um, I regularly check mine. Uh, it can be addictive looking at where your podcast is in the world. Um, I try not to do this, but I, I wanted to have a look uh, last week just to get some screenshots up to show you um, that this didn't happen ages ago. So this was literally last week and that screw it, just do it is there number 15. That's our podcast uh, nestled between Gary Vaynerchuk at 13 and 17, Tim Ferriss. Two of the people who um, are my, I don't know, people that I looked up, people that I look up to, um, I listen to their show. They're two of the shows that got me into podcasting. And again, if someone had said to me that my podcast could sit between theirs in a chart in a random country like Egypt, which this is taken from, then again, I would have laughed you at the room, but it is all possible. Um, just to finish up, these are the kind of, uh, and just to show you it's possible to launch a successful podcast no matter what industry you're in, what market you're in. These are just a really quick selection of the podcasts uh, that we've done through our agency to launch X Forces, um, helps military personnel transition from the military to civilian life um, through funding and mentoring by starting their own business. So for entrepreneurs, um, I also got to meet my first Lord, Lord Young there, uh, when we recorded that podcast for X Forces, uh, right through to um, the other side of the pond, uh, an American company called NPE Coaching uh, that helps fitness professionals um, be you uh, a personal trainer through to uh, an owner of multiple gyms um, and they got clients in over 100 countries across the world and offices in America, Australia and the UK. So we created podcasts for them too. Right through to consulting brands like Grenade who now have the number one chocolate bar in the UK uh, and the number one sports nutrition company uh, in Europe. Again, I think their products are in over 100 countries worldwide. But we consulted with them on their podcast when it wasn't getting the kind of traction that they were hoping for when they launched it on their own. So, um, and this is how I came across the Festival of Enterprise. They asked me to make a podcast for them, which I did. Um, and now uh, busy helping create this 100th live webinar today and the preceding 99 as well in my uh, role as director of content for the festival. So um, skip that one. So you're not going to be able to see this slide too well, I don't think. Um, but it's the biggest I could get it because I'm just showing you again, I am not um, a techie. Um, therefore, I've just thrown these slides together myself. But I'm going to read through and just tell you um, why I think there's a big opportunity here. 
for everybody in podcasting. So um, hopefully you can see that. If you don't see it too well, I do apologize. This, these are my slide skills, which I am not an expert in. So basically, since the middle of March through to the middle of April, these are the last stats that I was able, been able to find about global podcast listening behavior. And it shows that globally, there's been a 10% increase in listening, 10%. If you look at individual countries, what's even more interesting, the UK, 20%, um, Italy, 22%, France, 30%, 30% increase in people listening to podcasts. Don't know what's going down in um, France, Italy, and the UK, but clearly uh, people are listening to a lot more podcasts. Um, and interestingly as well, further down, you can see the, the top trending topics when it comes to uh, what people are listening to, what subjects they're listening to when they listen to podcasts. So perhaps unsurprisingly, I think, when you read up the, the, the five top trending ones are science and medicine. Well, we're in the middle of a pandemic, aren't we? Society and culture. There's been a lot of changes to society and indeed culture. Uh, kids and families. So everybody's at home, aren't they? Kids are home from school. So I know from a personal experience with uh, two daughters here being homeschooled that um, parents are looking for entertainment and education for their children. My kids are done by like 12 p.m. with the work that the school setting. So this kind of makes them wonder what they get up to the rest of the time. Anyway, moving on. TV and film. Yes, entertainment. We're all looking to be entertained during this time. And comedy, clearly, we all need a laugh. So those are the five top trending um, topics. Um, anybody, anybody know what topic they would like to, what category they would like to like to podcast about at the moment? Where would your category fit? Would it be sports, for example? Would it be business? Um, would it be investing? Would it be comedy? Would it be education? Would it be TV, film, society, culture, science, medicine? What is it? Anyone got any ideas? Post them up in the chat. Jenny says business finance. Effie says business as well. Um, so for me, I will move on to the next slide. So this is where it gets interesting for me, given that I've, I've not only launched my own podcast, but I've launched podcasts for a bunch of other brands as well, is that what I've learned is that instead of launching a podcast in a really broad category, really popular category, like business, for example, you want to choose a subcategory, and a subcategory of business could be entrepreneurship, it could be marketing, it could be management, it could be investing, it could be um, social businesses, there's a whole bunch. Um, and for me, that's what gives everybody else the opportunity to land with a splash, to get more eyeballs on your podcast, and ultimately more, more listens as well is by you know picking a, a niche you know it's a niche down and then over time as you build your audience as you grow your community to then branch out and maybe then try the business category instead because it's a very competitive place business um, as a category um, and not all categories have sub niches and and then you know it's pretty damn competitive obviously if you can't pick another one um, but only last year, for example, Apple Podcasts decided to broaden the range of categories. So again, it makes more opportunity for everybody. If they're opening up new categories, they're realizing um, that some of it, that they need to make more space for more people so more people can actually see a result when they launch a podcast that is not lost amongst all of these super popular podcasts like Joe Rogan, like Gary Vaynerchuk, like Tim Ferriss, etc. So that was a move Apple made um, last August, which I thought was very, very interesting. We mentioned Spotify before. So last year, Spotify made the biggest play in this industry. They spent half a billion dollars acquiring different podcast companies. That clearly got the attention of Apple, who then decided, as I say, to broaden the podcast categories uh, might be something that we're planning anyway, but I think it definitely got Apple's attention, uh, let alone 
other people's attention. Um, like I say, they spent half a half a billion. They've now spent another hundred million on uh, acquiring Joe Rogan's show. And one of the one of the things they acquired was something called Anchor. Now, Anchor um, is a platform. So very much how a website like this is hosted on a uh, by a hosting platform. Likewise, a podcast is hosted on a platform as well. So you own the content that you create, but it gets hosted on a platform such as Anchor and then gets distributed across a whole bunch of different platforms where people can access it, such as Spotify, such as Apple, SoundCloud, Stitcher, iHeartRadio. There's a whole bunch of them out there um, where you can find podcasts. So this was quite a big play. You can see they've already started branding it. Um, and the interesting thing here is that it's free. Everybody kind of thought with Spotify's model that it would become a subscription model, but it's not yet. Um, and you can do pretty much anything within Anchor. Uh, you can actually record interviews. So you could call somebody in, I don't know, New York, record an interview with them. That is recorded within Anchor. You can then record an intro about your show. So just introducing uh, yourself and what the show is going to be about. You can choose some music for your show. Um, you can drop and drag all of this into your own episode and into your own podcast. You can upload some artwork that's going to be the cover for your podcast that everyone, the first thing that they see. Um, and you can pretty much do everything in there. Uh, within my Facebook group, Podpreneur, we have one of the guys who uses this platform, Ted Lawler from If Only They Know podcast, to do a tutorial in there and show you how easy it is to create a piece of content and just drag and drop your intro, your music, your outro, all of the bits that um, become a single podcast episode and, and me as an agency owner, that's what we do. We kind of knit all those bits together for different brands who, again, don't want to spend the time doing that themselves. But what I'm saying is you can if you want to. If you want to, you can certainly um, do that. So um, another reason, I'm just going to grab my drink so I don't get thirsty. Um, so what I'm trying to show you here, guys and girls, is that I truly believe that the time is now when it comes to launching a podcast. There's never been a better time. Uh, people wonder if podcasting was a flash in the pan. They've only been hearing about it recently. Podcasting has been around since 2004. It's had a couple of um, peaks and troughs, like many industries. And hopefully what I'm showing you here is that all of the signs are showing that podcasting is here to stay. You know, it's it, listenership is up globally. More people are knowing and loving podcasts. Um, this competition, Apple, Spotify, um, and, and for me that was, you know, people listening to music on Spotify, then say leaving Spotify to go and listen to music on Apple Podcasts or iTunes. So Spotify want to keep their audience there. So that's why... You know, they made a big play into um, buying podcast companies, making exclusive content themselves and buying companies like Joe Rogan's show that makes exclusive content. Another big play here is that the technology in cars. So how do people consume podcasts? Um, a large proportion of people consume mute. Clearly, there's not, a been, there's not been a lot of commuting going on at the moment, but when that changes and we're seeing that, that change in the last week, for example, is that new cars are being built with the technology to have that purple button that you hit to play a podcast, okay? So podcasting, podcasting consumption when people commute or when you're going on family journeys, when you're going on holiday, is only going to go one way. It's only going to get more. And as, for me, as, as more and more people move away from radio that they don't want to listen to particular show at a certain time instead with podcasts you get to listen to whatever podcast you want whenever you want and on whatever device you want you can listen to it in your car you can listen to it on your mobile phone um, you can listen to it on your laptop that I'm looking at through to you right now a whole bunch of different ways you can do that so that again for me is another sign that uh, to see uh, an automotive market, for example, embrace that, recognize uh, the traction, the, the momentum that podcasts are building. It's pretty huge, I think. So 
Another move was Google. So Google Podcasts. Um, so before, if you remember back, uh, when you would use Google as a search engine, websites used to come up. Um, then um, video, you used to be able to find video. So Google started indexing video. So video used to come up in searches. Well, now audio comes up in searches. Um, so for example, if you were searching for somebody, a podcast about them might come up. For example, I had Piers Linney, uh, X Dragon's Den Investor on my show a couple of times. And I noticed when I was looking at the charts that a whole bunch of my episodes uh, were in the same chart on the same day. And I was thinking, why the hell is this? And that's when I found out about Google indexing podcasts. Because if people are searching for somebody, and Piers had an article in the Telegraph that day, people are searching for him. And my interview with him came up as something like the seventh most uh, ranked item on that Google search. Then I saw another one was um, Pippa Murray from Pippa Nut, the nut butter brand. They had launched a new nut butter. People were Googling that because that was all over the press. They had a big campaign in the London Underground. Um, and that was being found in searches again. So that's when people find your show, they download it, they listen to it, they share it, etc., etc. So, who's with me so far? Trevor's back. Streaming bad at his end. Um, Mark says benefits of plant-based pet food. Netflix game changer style. Very cool, Mark. Like the sound of it. Um, what's the name of the of the pet food, by the way? Do you, I always say I forgot to mention this at the very beginning, but always happy for people to connect on here. Um, do connect with me online afterwards at Alex Chisnell and, and post up your URL here or your LinkedIn profile, anything like that. So everybody on here can connect. This was meant to be a live event at uh, Olympia only um, when three weeks ago now, four weeks ago now. Yeah, a month ago now, I guess. April the 26th. Uh, sorry. April the 28th, 29th. We meant to be there, weren't we? Um, and Jenny's just signed up for Anchor. Yep. Uh, number of the people just because it's free, I think, and it's, it is super easy if you're doing it all yourself. Um, that's why I think so many people in my podcast group um, used Anchor. I use something called Acast, which brought you that information about which podcasts are um, trending at the moment. It's like the oldest one. You work with accountants. <laughs> Very good. Um, yeah, Trevor says Anchor's fantastic. Uh, a lot of people use it. There are a whole bunch out there, just like when you're choosing a web hosting platform. There are a whole bunch out there. We use Acast, which is the biggest one in the world. Um, I also use Libsyn, uh, which is the oldest one uh, in the world and drastically needs updating, in my opinion. Um, so, I'll give you a few more examples. So, for those of you, so what, what I've hopefully showed you now is now is definitely the right time to podcast. It's only going in one direction. Um, I also want to show you that anyone can do it. So, quick slug of this, if you bear with me. And um, I'm just going to tell you about Jonathan Bowman Perks and his Inspiring Leadership podcast. Got it. Okay. So, if you think you might be too old to start a podcast, if you don't have the technical knowledge to start a podcast, that you don't have um, enough of a following to start a podcast, then there is hope for everybody. Okay. And for much of the reasons that I outlined before, um, i.e. the fact that there are now more categories that you can launch your podcast in. Um, and something I probably should have mentioned at the start. So the way podcasts work and how you would get your podcast ranked in the chart. And for me, Surely everybody wants to get ranked in a chart because it's only going to lead to more visibility for your podcast. People are going to see your artwork in the, in, in the chart, see it's popular, and want to have a listen to it. And that's only going to lead to more listens, which is only going to, again, going to share your message, um, your thoughts, your, your, your mission, whatever it might be, across a wider audience. And surely that's something that, that, that everybody wants, whether you're an individual entrepreneur uh, doing this as a hobby, or whether you are a big brand wanting to um, sell more products or services. So um, the way podcasts work is that it's um, the metric is basically a combination of 
number of new downloads, number of new subscribers, and number of new ratings and reviews. So again, Apple never shares um, you know, much of that information with anybody, um, but that's what we believe are the metrics, not existing subscribers, existing downloads, like say Joe Rogan's 190 million. You know, if it was based on that, he would always be number one and there would be not looking for anybody. But, you know, I managed to get my podcast ranked number one. We've got lots of other um, people that we work with, like Jonathan, uh, to the top of the charts in multiple countries as well. Um, yes, Trevor, and there's no reason why you can't do that if you get, knowing your podcast, if you get the same number of downloads that you're getting for your live streams, not just crew, it's Trevor's podcast, 1,500 uh, views when it was recorded live and a live stream in the Facebook group last Wednesday, not even a week ago. You get that for your podcast, you get a number one podcast. Don't need huge numbers. It's just as long as you're always gaining new subscribers, new downloads, uh, new ratings and reviews, you get systematic about that. Anything is possible. So moving on. Um, so Jonathan um, didn't have an Instagram profile. Um, he didn't have a Facebook profile. He didn't even have an email list to market to. All he had was a LinkedIn profile with a couple of thousand followers on that. Nothing massive, nothing like Stephen Bartlett's 125,000 followers, um, you know, in his diary of the CEO podcast is consistently uh, number one. But anyone, anyone can do it, trust me. Um, so what did Jonathan do to do this? So Jonathan took his podcast, you can see it here, this is a recent one. Again, I wanted to show you that again, that like the number one doesn't go back ages and ages. Jonathan only launched his podcast last November. Um, within 90 days, um, he'd been top 10 in the UK. And since then, he's gone on again to get over 40 countries, um, top 20 ranking in like Italy, Spain, France, South Africa, Australia, a whole bunch of places. But here you can see he's ranked number nine in the UK chart. Um, you've got Dorovis CEO there with Stephen Bartlett, who I just name checked at number four. You've got Holly Tucker, not on the high street, at number six. You've got um, big show in the US, the Ed Milet show um, there as well. So it is it is entirely possible, folks. It isn't entirely uh, possible to do this. Um, and just to go back, so what did he do? He was consistent. Started off with one episode a week, moved up to two episodes um, a week. He would do a 10-minute video and put that, put that out out on YouTube, but he wasn't getting any traction on the YouTube. He was getting very, very small number of, of views on there. And he would also put that out on LinkedIn as well. And then what he decided to do was to do uh, an extra 30 minutes with that person, bolt the two bits together and put that out as a podcast. So we could strip the audio from the video he'd already recorded with people, so we had an existing show with about, I don't know, 20, 30 episodes on there. We could rip the bit, the audio from those YouTube videos, add the audio that he'd gotten, uh, the extra 30 minutes, bolt them together to a 40 minute podcast, launch, come up with a, you know, a strategy for him, to play to his strengths, to play to his LinkedIn audience, um, but to, to market it, in a number in a number of different ways and like i say getting to start building an email list send out a weekly newsletter start building that community and get people engaged um and for me you know when you talk about what well, popular question i get asked is how do you monetize the podcast with well, jonathan's business is a coaching business he coaches ceos from big blue chip companies and for me a show like this where he's interviewing a lot of military leaders but also now he's branched out in to interviewing CEOs from different companies is um, to actually use this podcast as a tool to interview 
the kind of CEO that he wants to have on his show, that he wants, sorry, that he wants to work with to get them on his show, targeting those people that he wants to work with. And for me, that is the big secret when it comes to monetizing a podcast. Most people think sponsorship. Sponsorship is only possible if you've got a minimum of 10,000 downloads. Um, and that's, you know, something you're not going to be able to do in week one unless you are an existing influencer, for example, or a well-known sports music star, um, in, in my opinion. Um, whereas someone like Jonathan and the rest of us, you can make money from podcasting before you even launch your podcast. Um, like I say, by reaching out to people that you want to get on your show. And then it's a really soft sell how they find out about what you actually offer, your products and services. You interview them, you find out what problems they have, and you're providing the solutions to their problems with your services. So moving on, why now? Why now? So, so I just want to underline why I think now is the right time for you. So billion plus YouTube users, active YouTube users, a billion. You know, how difficult is it to make a splash in YouTube? Pretty difficult. Unless, again, you're an existing influencer or you're you know, big star sports music or you're well known within your, your niche. Very difficult to get found. Um, that's not to say I don't recommend having YouTube as part of your strategy. I 100% do. 20 million active blogs. Again, there's over a billion blogs out there, but active, about 20 million. So the written word more difficult to get found than it is when it comes to podcasting. Who knows how many podcasts there are out there in the world now. Post up, let me know. Who thinks they know how many podcasts there are in the world right now? So Apple published on April the 20th that would reach a landmark. Anybody else want to take a guess before I reveal the answer? Trevor's gone for a million. Who says higher? Who says lower? Jenny says a bit lower. <laughs> Natasha says higher. Higher, lower, higher, lower. Right, Trevor's bang on. One million podcast was reached on April the 20th, 2020. Yet, interesting things here, folks. You might think that's a big number. You might think that's a small number. I don't know. But a million podcasts, um, which is a 24% increase in 2018 to 2019. And I haven't got the slide, but that's in 2019, there were 500,000 podcasts. So we've now gone in, say, April, what, in 16 months. We've doubled it, doubled it. And again, it, it, that's doubled in the last five years. So you can see how that's accelerated massively. Um, so yes, there are more podcasts out there, but just like anything, just like YouTube, there's a lot of crap podcasts out there. Don't let yours be one of the crap podcasts out there. Um, yes, you know, podcasts aren't for everyone. That's why there's video and the written word as well. You know, we've got three options. Um, to create content and get your message heard at the moment. You've got video, you've got audio, you've got the written word. You know, pick one uh, that resonates with you. But equally, for me, this is why I absolutely love podcasts. I'm just going to share that with you. Um, a podcast is a brand ownable, scalable, intimate stage outside of the Facebook powerhouse. With podcasting, the audience doesn't exist in one place in the hands of just one private company. The podcast can live across multiple platforms at the same time. So what that means to me is that unlike people who build their followings on a private social media group, like they've got a big Instagram following or they've got a big LinkedIn following or a big Facebook following, a big Twitter following, with podcasts, you own the content, it just gets distributed across all of those different platforms. 
you still own it. So your legacy, your library of content will always be there. You will always own it. Unlike if Facebook or Instagram or whoever suddenly changed the algorithm or they shut you out of your own group, which I've seen happen to people in my own podcasting niche, what do you do? You don't have an audience anymore. Unless you built that audience and then you start building an email list or a chatbot list on Instagram Messenger separately, you're screwed. You really are. So that's why I don't advocate building your audience on one private platform like Facebook, Instagram. Spread it across all of them. So if something happens like that, you're not left out in the cold. Uh, and what I love about podcasting, another thing I love is that you can literally record the audio for your podcast, okay, and put it out as audio. You can film that, okay, you can film the podcast and put that out on YouTube channel, Instagram TV. You can film it live, you could live stream it as we do with Trevor's, not just crew one, and you can stream it live into Facebook. Um, Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn, you can do lives in all of there. And then you can get a transcription of that podcast, so a written transcription of your podcast episode. And you can print that as a blog on your website. You can pull paragraphs out of there and use that as micro content to put out an article on LinkedIn. You can use a video snippet, an audio snippet. See what I'm doing? You, this is how you market your podcast. You turn one piece of content into 30 separate pieces of micro content. Okay, This is some of the stuff I talk about um, in my higher level groups, just starting a mastermind group. And these are some of the tactics that we talk about. How do you grow your podcast once you've launched? What kind of tactics do you need to employ uh, to build a community of people? So just finishing up for you now, next few slides, I hope, guys. Um, so you are your own media now. You know, literally, this has changed everything. That has accelerated the growth of Podcast No End. We saw Ted, I was talking about using the Anchor um, hosting platform. He does it all on his phone, literally records the content on his phone, edits it on his phone. I went like that because it's literally two dots, and you literally bring them apart or together on the sound waves. Um, to edit your podcast. It is so simple now. Um, you know, everything you've got is in that phone. You can record your own audio, you can record your own video, you can write your own blogs, social media posts, etc. And you can literally press a button after you've uploaded your podcast episode and distribute it across the world literally like that. Literally like that, 140 countries for my show now, boom, just like that by pressing a button, which is insane. Um, equipment wise, you just need that, as I just showed you. Um, jumped ahead of myself there, but that's all you need. Um, and what I mean by that is you can launch a podcast spending no money at the moment. Anchor is a hosting platform for free, owned by Spotify. Um, there are apps on your phone free software apps that you can use to record your podcast, edit your podcast. Um, and yes, you know, that's what I'm trying to say. You know, people think podcast is expensive. It can be expensive. It's like, how long is a piece of string? Um, I just spent a load of money, literally the week before lockdown, on improving my mobile audio equipment. So when I go to London and interview people for my show, um, I seriously upgraded my kit, managed one interview, before lockdown and haven't been able to use it since. Hey, um, you know, this lockdown has been a great leveler when it comes to technology. Everybody's using the same stuff. Everybody's using Zoom or the equivalents like this to um, call people, to host them on live webinars, and it's the same for you. It's a great leveler. You can improve the quality of your audio for very little money. You can spend 10 to 20 pounds on getting a clip-on microphone that plugs into your phone if you're recording solo episodes. If you are recording uh, via Zoom, etc., then we're getting all of our clients and their guests to have a mic that they plug into their laptop um, and it just improves the quality of the audio. And you can get something like a, uh, a Blue Snowball for £50, a Blue Yeti, got the best names in podcasting as well, the best names, Blue Snowball, Blue Yeti, 
Now, Blue Yeti is about 100, 120 pounds. So those are like entry level mics. You can get a decent pair of headphones for like 50 pounds to improve the audio. But what I'm saying is you don't need to. You can literally use your phone. Um, you know, if you're a startup, you're an entrepreneur, you want to start with nothing, you can do that. If you are a brand and you want to improve the audio, then yes, um, before lockdown, our clients, for example, would be booking them into a studio um, in London or Manchester to record their podcast in a podcast studio, or we'd be going to them in the case of a zoo, we're podcast, making a podcast for a zoo, and we'd be going to them with our equipment and recording uh, those interviews there, um, and then running it through our software when we got home to again improve the quality of that audio. So just going to finish up another example for you. Um, so if you think, I don't have enough time to do this, never going to get around to doing this, um, you need about four hours a week. Yes, you can spend as much time as you want on a podcast, but you can get by doing one episode with about four hours. You know, think about how much TV do you watch a week? How much time do you spend talking on the phone to friends or playing games? You know, whatever it might be. Can you find um, four hours? Um, those of you on the webinar, who thinks they can find uh, four hours a week to, to start a podcast? Um, oh, Trevor's sound's gone, frozen. Sorry to hear that, buddy. Um, yeah, I wish you could guess the lottery number as well. Yeah, if you launch now, you still be at the beginning of this sound revolution. 100%. Um, I was chatting to a lady in New York recently, Liz, and she was telling me she thought we we're at the same stage of the journey as when blogs first came out, that it's a 10-year journey, and she thought we were about year four. We still had about a six-year window of opportunity before the next technology comes out, uh, whatever that's going to be, we don't know. Um, and it might come sooner, of course. Someone might bring out that technology sooner, but... You know, I, I likewise that like Trevor says, I, I think we're nowhere near the top of the curve. Um, yeah. Smiley face with Jenny. Um, yeah, so who else thinks they can find four hours in a week? So for me, it's something like this. You would research for an hour who you're going to interview. You are going to spend an hour recording that interview with them. Um, and that includes breaking the ice and, and afterwards. Um, then you're going to spend an hour listening back to that interview and editing it. And then you're going to spend an hour promoting it across different social platforms the day it comes out. Yes, you can spend more. You can spend time every single day promoting your podcast um, and then researching more guests, etc., etc. But that's just to show you that's the kind of time investment that um, I think you can get started on. Um, so Harpal says, what about if you have a book and podcast linking to the book? 100%. Um, I have a number of people on my show who have used my podcast platform to promote their book, for example. And I've been speaking to two different people who want to uh, launch a podcast at the same time that they launch a book. And I think it's a great idea. I really do. Um, and it's something I've thought about actually turning, doing it the other way around, turning my podcast into a book, which Tim Ferriss has done um, with his Tribe of Mentors uh, book uh, is something to do to showcase the kind of people I've had on my show. So, yeah, 100% you could do that. I think it can be um, a great, great call. Mark says, can podcast be any length? Yeah, 100%, Mark. So interesting one here is when I... Uh, I hosted a, a workshop um, and I, I brought up the chart, top 10 chart for entrepreneurship. Um, my podcast in there is like, at the moment they're longer because I've been doing like an hour on here and then putting them out as podcasts. But my show kind of fluctuates really between about 35 minutes and I'd say 45 minutes on average. Yet in that chart that we had, there was a podcast that was five minutes in length through to a podcast that was three and a half hours in length. Boom. But the trend is down. So last year, podcasts, the average podcast 
uh, was three minutes shorter in 2019 than it was in 2018. So it was something like 30 or 33 minutes. I can't remember the exact one now, um, but that was um, the number. So just to show you again, so Scott, Scott Stockdale has a full-time job, nine to five, uh, had about 700 followers on Instagram, 700 followers on um, LinkedIn, no email list, no Facebook profile, no Twitter profile. Six days after launching, uh, and he was a student of mine. He came through my course, the online course that I have, and boom, six days, number 10. You can see there, bottom on the right-hand side. Scott, stop there. Scott Stockdale, Entrepreneur Can Party. A massive achievement just shows you what you can do again rubbing shoulders with the likes of ed myler who's a massive name in the states his podcast through to stephen bartlett and number four there literally six days after launching um and since then this was only in march so we're now in may and i saw scott post up last week that he's now in over 30 countries five continents across the world with his show um and it's, it's changing his life just like it changed mine. My podcast changed my life three years ago. So just to finish up, guys, just a couple of one-liners for you. With podcasting, you can expose your brand to a new audience. Who wants to do that? You can attract new listeners. So you're going to market your podcast when you launch your existing customers or your existing followers, or your existing database, whatever you've had, even if it's friends and family, you're gonna tell them about it. You're then gonna try and launch, get it into one of the charts where new, a new audience is gonna see it, attract those new listeners, uh, and Gen Z is the most popular listening demographic there is, so 18 to 29 year olds, something like 45% uh, before COVID-19, listen to podcasts. I don't know what the figure would be now. Higher, I'd imagine. And amplify your story. For me, as I mentioned earlier, the best way that people can actually um, monetize their podcast, and I think everyone should monetize their podcast. If you're investing your time in your podcast, you need to find a way to make money from it. When I launched mine, that wasn't what I was thinking about. I didn't have any products or services. I was working with Virgin Startup as a delivery provider, uh, providing loans and mentoring. And it's not something that I did. But now I've developed online course, just launching a mastermind. We've now got an agency. So this is how podcasting has changed my life. I've gone all in on podcasting. That's why I kind of feel I've come full circle. Uh, when I started out at the BBC all those years ago. But, you know, launch your podcast, develop your products and services. For me, it's screw it, just do it. It's start now, get perfect later. Don't spend your time trying to get everything 100%, all your ducks lined up in a row. Get it 80% ready and learn on the fly. Um, but use your podcast to tell your story, to educate your audience about who you are and what you do. And then, if you've got products and services, they're going to learn about them. If you haven't, start thinking about developing them and turning those people into paying customers. That is my message for all of the brands, the entrepreneurs that we work with as an agency or uh, through the course, is to turn those listeners uh, into paying customers of yours. 75% um, of advertisers survey plan to increase their podcast ad spend. So clearly, if you are looking at the sponsorship route, it is very popular, both with um, podcast hosts and sponsors as well. Uh, as I said at the moment, everybody's doing remote interviews, not in-person interviews, and the technology is a great leveler, another reason to get in on podcasting. And forget about imposter syndrome. We've all had it. Every one of us who's been a podcast host, um, that's why you know I've got – face for radio, a face for audio, you get to hide behind it. Um, it's far easier, I think, than launching a, a vlog or a blog um, being seen in the face of um, that video series, for example. Um, with radio, with audio, podcast, you can hide behind it to a certain degree. 
Um, I'm now doing lives like this. I never used to be doing that kind of thing. But, you know, get over yourself. Get out of your own way. Um, do not suffer from imposter syndrome. Um, podcasts provide a great opportunity to find your voice um, and be heard at the end of the day. And as I say, you can just turn one weekly show into a whole month's worth of content. People think that they have to um, – create new content when it comes to podcasts well you don't you can use your existing content if you are producing content um, and turn that into a podcast whether that's a book whether that's uh, like Harpo mentioned whether that's a vlog like Jonathan Bowman Perks had or whether it's a blog that other um, clients we've worked with have had just turn that into a podcast um, as I've mentioned how you can do that just be consistent like anything in life if you're consistent with it, people, um, you know, people that will expect your podcast to come out at the same time on the same day every week, and that's how you build a loyal audience. So this is pre-COVID-19, but 7.1 million people in the UK listen to podcasts each week. Now that's gone up 20% now. Um, so you can add what what's that on there? Another crikey, um, another 1.4. So an eight and a half million people listen to podcasts each week now in the UK. Um, me doing my maths on the fly. You know, would you want to get some of those people uh, as listeners and then customers? I know I would. Um, so start thinking about marketing your business through starting your own podcast. You can promote your business through your podcast, guys. It doesn't have to be a hard sell. It can be a really soft sell as well. Uh, but make podcasting part of your marketing strategy. Get your voice heard. Get your brand's message heard as well. And don't be a seven. What do I mean by a seven? So that is the number that people stop podcasting. People don't get to number eight. They quit at number seven. And if you just kept going, over time, you will get the benefits that a podcast can provide you with. I'm living proof of that. Like I say, I'm not a techie. Um, my first week, I had two downloads, clearly my mother and my wife, two. And now it's in 140 countries just because I've been consistent. And yes, there have been times when I thought, shall I quit? This is a lot of work. This is hard work. I'm not getting the rewards. Is anybody listening to my show? Um, you know, all of those thoughts, we all have them. We all have them. You just got to be consistent. Keep putting your message out there. Stick, still keep putting content out there. There's nothing like an overnight success in anything, in any walk of life. Uh, what next? How do you start? Uh, well, that is the hardest thing for most people um, is starting. But you want to do something, um, whether that is brainstorming what you want to talk about, uh, brainstorming who you want to listen, your listeners to be, what is your ideal listener avatar like? Are they male? Are they female? Um, are they 20? Are they 40? Are they into rugby? Are they into business? You know, all of these things are places you can start. You can start researching guests online. You can start researching um, equipment. You can start research. You know, for me, way to start is to is to brainstorm uh, what you want to talk about and who you want to listen to your show um, those are a couple of the subjects we talk about in my uh, facebook group podpreneur that is the group there just go to facebook groups and look for podpreneur and we'll let you in we're now over 600 members we only started this six weeks ago um, so it's been amazing. Get 100 members a week in there and over 10 new podcasts launched. Excuse me. But open invitation to all of you who are thinking of starting to podcast just in the early stages or as more and more people who are joining this group do actually have existing shows and they're looking to grow their podcast. Um, if that's you as well, come and join us. That is the easiest way you can do it. Um, those of you who, who've messaged me um, asking how else 
you can get involved, um, how you can work with me, then I'm just going to literally run you through those options as well. If it's something that resonates with you, do get in touch. Um, go to podpreneur.co.uk. That's my new website. Um, I've got a course on there called Podcast Launch Program. It's a uh, uh, it's got its own app as well that you can download and you basically listen to it on one of these, via the app, wherever you want, whenever you want, um, and on whatever you want, your phone, your laptop, whatever it might be, in the car, for example. Um, and that's my course. That's literally everything I've wrung my brain out, everything I've ever learned about podcasting in a stage one to stage 10, um, from ideation to um, to launch and to growing uh, your own community around your podcast. So everything you can learn from all my mistakes, I've literally put it all into into that. And if you're somebody who already has a podcast or is literally in, in the launch stages of a podcast um, and you are really serious about taking your podcast to the next level, building a community of people um, around your podcast and you want to learn about these growth strategies, um, marketing strategies on how to do that, then I'm launching a brand new mastermind program um, for 10 people uh, that I want to work with privately uh, to help them get their podcast to um, where I've taken mine because the benefits are unbelievable, um, I have to say. So just to finalize, guys, thank you all uh, for staying on here. Um, services we offer literally as an agency everything from strategy production promotion uh, design analytics equipment we recommend uh, if you want to work with us we do three done for you versions and a number of different bespoke podcasts that uh, a lot of people that i've been working with at the moment uh, want to take bits of those three and put it into their own version um, and we can obviously do that for you as well so um, if you're an entrepreneur or a brand and you want to leverage somebody else's time uh, and expertise, um, then get in touch. Let's have a conversation um, and find out how we can help you. So ways you can connect with me. I'm sorry for useless with timekeeping, for dra dragging you nine minutes over. Uh, easiest way is uh, LinkedIn. My name is at Alex Chisnell, or you can email alex at screw it, just do it org, or you can drop me a WhatsApp message on my phone number there. That is it. Thank you all very much indeed. I'm just going to check out our poll, see how many people we got. It's a tie, it's a three way tie. Wow, I've never had that. Equally spread between becoming a thought leader in your space, marketing your products or services monetizing your personal brand three way tie who'd have thunk it uh, well thank you all very much indeed any questions i'm happy to stay on for a couple of minutes i've got another five minutes um if you want to ask a question post it up in the chat box there i'm happy to answer any last questions but um just like to thank you all for your time today um if i can help you in any way please let me know easiest way as i say is come on over to our Facebook group. We do live trainings every week. Thank you, Jenny. Thank you, Natasha. Ah, oh, awesome when somebody says it's been inspiring. I love that. Um, we've got a live training tomorrow night, funnily enough. Um, we've got somebody who launched their podcast at the beginning of the pandemic, and I'm going to be chatting to them about uh, what they've learned during their launch uh, and post-launch and trying to grow their show and hopefully uh, giving them a bit of mentoring uh, and a couple of few pointers on how they can improve and grow their show. So, yes, thank you all very much indeed. Really appreciate it. Um, do connect with me and I will connect with you. So, thank you all very much indeed. If there's no final questions, then I will sign off. Thank you, Mark, as well. Appreciate it. Sounds particularly interesting. You're one. I think you're the only one who posted up exactly what you're uh, thinking of. Um, so, I always love to see that. And yes, Trevor, we will get your podcast to number one. If I can do it, honestly, with no tech knowledge, um, honestly, anybody, anybody can do it, guys. Opportunities for everybody. Um, cool. Thank you very much indeed. Cheers, Mark. Yeah, do get in touch with me now on LinkedIn, guys. I've got another webinar at 2 o'clock. Going to grab some lunch, and then I'll have a bit of time later this afternoon. 
uh, to connect with people who, who messaged me up today. So um, thank you, Eddie. Appreciate it, buddy. Um, thank you, Mark. Thank you, Jenny. Thank you, Natasha. Thank you, Trevor, and anybody else. Um, as well, posted up a question earlier, Harpal, um, and Mark as well. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Have a great afternoon, and uh, thank you for watching.